It's scientifically proven that one of the best ways to see how a guy's mind works to really see what type of person you're dealing with, ask one question. What's the biggest animal you can beat in a fight? You ask that and you'll learn a whole lot in a short time. And in 2021, British firm YouGov did a survey. There's a lot to unpack here, but mostly the 6% of Americans that think they could handle a grizzly without getting their existence abolished. Three, two, one, oh! And that's how long it would take. Bears are inevitable enough to be one of the few animals I have a one-shot rule against. As in, if they're coming at me full force and I have one shot in the chamber, I'm using it to self-medicate my exit off the mortal coil. I might not survive a hippo attack, but I'm for sure not surviving my reaction to one. I'll same day shit myself to the lord's door before I let a chimp handle me, and I'll self-subtract with the quickness before a bear makes me part of its business. Bears are the most conceptually inconsiderate creatures in nature. Basically a giant unhinged dog with every possible attribute maxed. Think about it, nature dropped an apex all-terrain crossfit predator that can out everything you and just let the rest of the population deal with it. But what's the most dangerous bear actually? Well today we're going to be talking about every breed of bear and its chances of putting you on a shirt. Each bear will get a merc rating, merc standing for might eviscerate, ravage, or just cancel you. Yeah, that's de definitely the K word that was supposed to be there. And as always, each rating will be in my very biased opinion. But yeah, call me Joe Rogan or Grinder Gladiator. Either way, we are going down to bear hole. Starting with the sun bear. Named after the thing he spent way too long looking at. Those eyes stared at the void and the void blinked first. And yes, they're built like they barely qualify to be here. He looks like a bear with crippling social anxiety that got told to act natural. They were recently involved in a controversy in China. The controversy was nobody believed that wasn't a man in costume. To be fair, they're easily the least coded Ursus out there. They're the smallest in the world at no heavier than a buck forty. And be honest, how long would it take for you to guess that foot was attached to a grizzly's cousin. Those bare feet help them climb trees, and some bears are the most tree climbing of them all. But how dangerous is this identity crisis? Well, they're shy, reclusive, and mostly eat fruits and plants. They're also trigger happy, nearly blind, and they share real estate with tigers. Sun bears are known to attack people when caught off guard, and their poor eyesight means they can easily get jump scared by humans. They also have one of the strongest bite forces relative to body size of any bear, but probably only because they use teeth to rip through tree bark. There was even one case where a sun bear tiger showdown ended up with both of them becoming past tense, so what could they do to a human? Well, from 2000 to 2010, there were 33 sun bear attacks on humans, with the most common injuries being facial. But all the attacks were accidental encounters where the sun bears would probably argue self defense. And to my knowledge, there are no recorded cases of a sun bear killing a person. So with no body count and being the smallest, but also being neurotic enough to be a threat, I'll give the sun bear a merc rating of 5. Next you have the Andean, also known as the spectacled bear, for obvious reasons. On paper, he's the biggest land predator in that part of South America. Only technically, because only 5% of four eyes diet is meat. Like the sun bear, they're only really a jihad to fruits and plants. Also like the sun bear, the walking spectacle is very tree climbing, and they'll even build their version of a tree house to sleep in. To be fair, you don't really have a choice when your hall monitor's a jaguar. But don't think Buddy's sweet because he got glasses. They've been known to take out llamas, cows, and even tapers twice their size. But how dangerous are they to people? Well, in 2004, an Andean bear escaped from a Berlin zoo and made a beeline for the children's area. What followed was one of the most gruesome displays ever caught on camera. Viewer discretion is advised. Apparently the spectacled bear only has one human body on his record, and technically it was a hunter who shot the bear out of a tree only for the bear to land on him. I'm sorry, but if you fail physics that hard, you deserve to get packed up by Paddington. And yes, Paddington was indeed a spectacle. Spectacles are also the closest living relative of… yeah. The short-faced bear. Oh, the duality. But considering the only casualty was more to slapstick than a homicidal bear, I give the spectacled beast a merc rating of 2. And now we're at the panda portion, which might confuse some since there's a genuine corner of the internet that'll tell you that pandas aren't actually bears. They'll sooner believe China has an obese biracial gerbil waddling around. To be fair, being a bear but identifying as a bamboo processing plant is a questionable life choice. But one, bamboo is so protein packed that Ursus Oreo actually ends up getting just as much as wolves and feral cats. And two, binging bamboo all day means pandas actually have one of the strongest bite forces of any land mammal. Wild pandas usually avoid people, and there's currently no record of a plus size eyeshadow cotton ball killing a human. The pandas will 100% lash out if they think you deserve it, often with life-altering consequences. Nobody demonstrated panda potential more than straight at the Beijing Zoo, a young panda 
named Goo Goo. In 2006, a drunk dude climbed into the enclosure to give Goo Goo a hug, and Goo Goo gave him an attitude adjustment with his teeth. After several minutes of biting each other, yes, Drunky bit the bear. They were eventually separated with a fire hose. In 2007, a teenager tried Goo Goo and got chunks ripped out of his legs to the point where bones were showing. And in 2009, a father climbed over a barrier to retrieve a toy his son dropped. His reward was his leg caught in Goo Goo's vice grip jaws that keepers literally had to pry open. I really think if Panas didn't wear the makeup, y'all would not be trying them like this. The worst part about getting mauled by something so goofy is it probably takes a long time for bystanders to realize you're in trouble. They're the epitome of, I'm not a killer, but don't push me, and for that, they get a Merc rating of 4, cause really, you get flatlined by a panda, you probably deserved it. Now we got the black bear, aka the fight back part of the rhyme. Which is kinda true, black bears are more likely to run away than run a fade. And after seeing them climb trees, thank the natural order for that. Although they probably only learned that from dealing with another bear down the list. Black bears are high-key champion generalists. They're smart enough and adaptable enough to live almost anywhere in America. Also, they're not always black, but that's besides the point. Moonlighting as a giant raccoon means they run into people more than the average bear, and if you look at the numbers, they might not be as harmless as the nursery rhyme suggests. Since 1784, there have been 66 times where a black bear and a human resulted in one less human. Pretty low, but there's more. There's just under 12 black bear conflicts a year. 52% are typically defensive, 33% were food motivated, and 15% were predatory. That number's interesting, because that's actually higher than what you would see in brown bears. Folks now believe there's a slow, but very real rise in predatory male black bears murking people. In fact, the first ever fatal black bear attack in California just happened last month. Male blacks, but black bears that is, they have a wider range, which means a desperate down bad male is more likely to try his luck on a hiker. The last stat I have is 88% of black bear assisted census subtractions were predatory, and 92% of those predatory pastimes were done by males. But when I say slow rise, we are still talking about one person getting clapped a year. Also, apparently none of those casualties carried pepper spray, so if you do that, hike in groups and put food and garbage away, you probably won't get cooked by Smokey. In fact, a majority of black bear encounters end like a Mormon liaison, where neither side gets touched. So, they're flight over fight and statistically harmless, but they live in close proximity with people and are technically more likely to see US free pizza than grizzlies. So I'll give them a 6.5. Six final answer. Not unlike their Asian cousins, and disclaimer, we're getting into the legitimately dangerous territory. The Asiatic black bear, also called the moon bear, is the first honest threat to human way of life. They're way more on sight than American black bears, and for that matter, even Eurasian brown bears. To be fair, neither of them have to deal with a certain big cat. Like most bears, they're most dangerous when people run into them and the bear feels cornered, and for that reason, attacks are on the rise. From April 2023 to just November, 212 people caught the wrong end of Asiatic aggression from a black bear. Six died, and food scarcity means those numbers are probably going up. In fact, that's why they're a problem in Japan. You see, in Japan, there's a shift with young people leaving the countryside to go make bread in the big city, and food feeding bears moving into the now less crowded human neighborhoods. Now, it's never been easier to find problems with an Asian bear, and from 2000 to 2020, 2,357 black bear attacks have been recorded. 42.4% suffered severe injury, 1.2% ended up with permanent disability, and 4.8% lost the ability to exist. They're dead. And over 20% of those attacks happened in August, i.e. right around the time they're getting ready to hibernate. There was even a case earlier this year where a man had to negotiate his arm with a Swiss knife after the Asian variety refused to let him go. Since this is the first bear that is a somewhat regular threat to people, I'm gonna give the Asiatic black bear a 7.5. Although with the whole bear bile farming thing, ah, we probably had it coming. And now we get to my honest inspiration for this video, the brown bear. Uh, but honestly, first I'm gonna clear something up. The grizzly bear is a subspecies of the brown bear, kind of like how the arctic wolf is an offshoot of the gray guy. The grizzly is basically a landlocked brown bear, they're further inland, and their grocery list is a lot shorter. Which is why, even though they're the most famous, grizzlies aren't even the biggest bears brown and around. They're smaller than the Kam what? The Kamchatka bear dwarfs grizzlies, mostly because of the fresh supply of salmon they get from shacking up on the Chumkatska Peninsula, which actually has the highest density of brown bears on the planet. There's like 20,000 of them there. And of course, what y'all know about the Kodiak bear? Named after the Kodiak Islands nature was forced to vault it on. They can outweigh a grizzly by almost 500 pounds, and that's purely off the Pescatarian. That is a whole mountain of a bear. Grizzly bears are smaller, but the higher competition and being gatekept from coastal calories makes them that much more aggressive. Which makes them, and I don't like to curse that much, my mom watches me, but that is a fucking problem. They're like a predatory Thanos. Your demise is inevitable if they greenlight it. They have jaws that can crush a bowling ball. Pause that mean. You're a high five away from balling like a manual 
will handle. I've seen them punk entire wolf packs out of food, and they might be the only thing alive that can choke slam a moose. There's only one video that truly encapsulates how fornicated you are if a grizzly chases you. Well, well other than this. Here you have a grizzly running, and way, 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 wow, we st we're still going. Way, way, oh, right there. There, that's the caribou he's after. Keep in mind, this is the 30 second mark of the video. About four minutes was all it took for the seed of Santa to get packed up like a Christmas present and turned into part of the past. But how dangerous are brown bears actually? Since 1784, there have been only 82 fatal brown bear conflicts in North America. Yellowstone surprisingly only has eight. From 2000 to 2015, there were a recorded 664 brown bear attacks around the world, with 95 flat lines. Of these attacks, 17% involved someone with a dog, 10% were after a bear got shot or trapped, aka the person had it coming, 20 percent were sudden encounters, and an overwhelming 47% involved a female with a cub, proving that the only thing more dangerous than the bear, boom, a child. No. But really, numbers say there's only 11 brown bear attacks in North America a year, 40 if we're talking worldwide. In fact, the chances of getting murked by a brown bear in Yellowstone are 1 in 2.1 million. I do think bears suffer a lot from shark syndrome, where the attacks might not happen often, but when they do, they're usually graphic enough to go international. At the same time, the worst case scenario scares me more than death itself, so brown bears, specifically grizzly bears, get a merc rating of 8. Make that an 8.5. If you know, you know. Now the sloth bear is a great example of something I always say. You have to convince a predator you're worth the effort where prey will off you before you get the chance. Most bears see humans as a fellow predator. The problem is here you got one that spends most of its life as prey. Sloth bears got tiger trauma in their bloodline. They also get plenty of smoke from leopards, problems from dole packs, and somehow the same elephants and rhinos that are chill-ish around tigers have zero tolerance for the baloos of the world. Add it all up and you get a floppy faced termite eater that's also one of the most violently aggressive animals on the planet. You basically we have a giant honey badger with attitude and all the tools to follow through. It's prey trauma with predatory hardware. They don't really know how to kill, they just inflict as much pain as physically possible. That's why many sloth bear victims end up with their faces torn off since that's their go-to move against tigers. A trauma bear with chimpanzee tendencies means they get a merc rating of 9. There's no good record of sloth bear attacks on people, but it's the fact that they live on top of and kill more people than other bears that outnumber them. This is technically the most dangerous bear per capita. And it's the one named after a sloth. In fact, one sloth bear was called the man-eater of Mysore after he killed 12 people and severely mauled another two dozen. In his defense, something like that's pretty rare, and it's believed the bear was injured by people first and then went on a rampage. Not like the last bear, which is one of the few animals to see humans as prey. I'ma kill the suspense right now, the polar bear is a 10. From 1870 to 2014, only 20 people have been killed by polar bears out of 73 attacks, but it's the frequency that's scary. What do I mean? Well, over 60% of attacks happened between 1960 and 2009. 20% happened from 2010 to 2014. That means in this study, 20% of all polar bear attacks happened at less than 3% of the time, and that less than 3% was in the last four years. The polar bear is the only bear that classifies as a hyper carnivore, and they'll try anything from walruses to reindeer, and they'll even body a beluga whale. As you know, polar bears are one of the rare animals that'll actively hunt people. It's true what they say, if you see a polar bear in the wild, your expiration date's already stamped. They can smell a seal from almost 20 miles away, so you know when ice bear pulls up, it's no mistake. The Arctic op is such a threat in Churchill, Manitoba, it's common courtesy to leave car doors unlocked in case someone needs a four-wheeled panic room from a polar bear. The same place, by the way, that has the Churchill Polar Bear Detention Center. And it's exactly what it sounds like, it's an air-conditioned temporary holding cell for polar bears that get way too comfortable around people. No other bear is more of a certified homicide once you make eye contact. But they wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for receding sea ice basically stranding a marine mammal on land. And like with black bears, it's a starving, desperate rogue males that are most likely to turn a human into a hashtag. And that's kind of the thing, every bear on this list would easily put humans at a 10. Like I said, Asiatic black bears are the most common victims of bear bile farms. Sloth bears are often kept as dancing tourist traps, which involves brutal maimings and shoving a rope through their nose. Literally, through it. And despite the memes, humanity has done more to pandas than for them. Also, there's the fact that most bears want nothing to do with you. Literally, one of the best ways to avoid a bear is to actually make noise to give the bear a chance to avoid you. Most bear brutalities come from a bear getting jump scared and making a decision. Also, there's bear spray, but bear spray is a lot like a seatbelt. You don't get into a car expecting to do a barrel roll down I-80, but the same way the seatbelt makes the worst case better, so does bear spray. In fact, you'll probably never use it. Moral of the story? 
Yeah, honestly, the bear wouldn't even choose us. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. If you rock with the Merc rating thing, I actually have an entire book on the concept. A hundred animals that can, you, you can read the title. And again, each animal has a rating based on my personal bias. And because today's my birthday, the book will be 52% off on Amazon. If you're interested, the link will be in the description. But other than that, drink water, cherish your parents. Remember, if it's white like a beluga, it's the last time we'll talk to you. And I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Nothing.